What is up, my friends? It is your old pal, Closet Gamer, back again for some more Age of Engineering. And welcome to episode 56 of my Age of Engineering series. Um, I've been very, very busy the past few days. That's right. Um, aside from uh, Minecraft stuff, um, I've been mucking around with graphics and stuff. I've got two graphics cards in my computer. I've got like a, an onboard one that's built into my motherboard. Um, and I've got a uh, like a dedicated graphics card. But what was happening was uh, my Minecraft installation was deciding to use the shitty onboard one instead of uh, my nice expensive uh, dedicated graphics card which was really causing me some issues <laughs> and uh, they all seem to have gone away now I've actually got my computer sorted out properly so that's pretty good um, but anyway enough of my rambling um, today I want to get into some Draconic Evolution uh, because I want to get this guy, I want to get a mob grinder um, for grinding up withers because we need lots and lots of wither stars for future recipes um, and we also need to get into Draconic Evolution anyway um, it's the next, next kind of logical step I believe uh, in, in the series so um, there's a couple of bits of automation that I want to show you um, but uh, why don't we do something first actually why don't we go and get our trophy because uh, well actually let me um, here we go are you ready do 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 New trophy, Draconic Evolution. Oh my good god. What we need to do actually is we need to teach that to a recipe. Let's get that and let's get a singularity. Now the important thing that you need to remember when when uh, putting these recipes in here like... You can hear my automation kicking in downstairs. <laughs> can you hear it? There we go, there's that recipe taught. Good. Um, so we've now got automate. actually what I need to do is put that back. Um, have I got all substitutions? I want all substitutions on. There we go, good. Right, that'll work now because you need, uh, you need to take into account that there's something odd about singularities. Um, basically, um, if, you, uh, if we have a look at a singularity, let's have a look, uh, singularity, um, then actually what we need to do first is to press uh, F3 and H um, to show uh, advanced tooltips uh, and what that will do is that allows you to see uh, the uh, MBT data so now you've got more uh, information there. If you press control uh, and then if you press shift that will show the MBT data so each one of these has got a frequency so these two pairs so say this one and this one they've got the same uh, frequency in their MBT data and that's because Applied Energistics use that, uses that to, uh, to, to send information um, across distances because these are entangled. Um, so each one of these has got a different frequency. You can see that, that the, the numbers change. Um, so that's why they don't stack. That's a bit of an issue. Um, which, once I place my trophy down, brings me on to the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, because I've got some automation set up downstairs and I wanted to show you how it's going. Look at that. That's a bit prettier, isn't it? That's not as bad as... Um, which is the word? This one. Look at this. Rubbish. Beautiful. I like it. Very, very nice. Very pretty. So, Draconic Age. Very, very good. Um, not far to go, really, is there now? We're kind of... We're kind of getting there, aren't we? What triggers the Creative Age, I wonder? What is it? It's this little... Little doodad. What is that? An angel ring or something? Um, let's have a look. If you type in trigger, it will tell you all of the things um, that you need. Uh, so yes, angel ring. So what does this need? Just glass. That's good. Oh, I'll bet it's this one though, isn't it? What's that? Shapeless recipe. So these draconic cores, uh, cursed lasso, flight module, ender star. What's an ender star? This is just junk. Crikey. Um, I'm not even going to look at the recipe for this because it looks... Yes. Actually, it's not too bad, actually. I don't think much of that stuff's too bad. Uh, but we're not going to bother about that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the automation that I've been setting up um, over the past sort of few days. You can see that I've been tearing up my floor frantically trying to figure out uh, what channels I've got. So um, I've done some, uh, done some calculator automation. Uh, so let's have a quick look at this. So this is like my, uh, my torture rig, um, my RF Tools Control torture rig. So my victim today is uh, the docking station fitted with an atomic calculator. Um, so this guy has got three inventory spaces. 
Um, and the usual way of automating it um, is to like have an ME interface feeding in stuff into a chest, like two blaze rods and uh, say a flawless diamond. And then you'd have uh, something like round robin uh, ender IO conduits coming into here. Um, and you could probably try and use like counting item filters or something like that with round robin. Um, but the trouble is, is if you have like counting item filters on each side um, and it says, you know, you only put one blaze rod in there. Trouble is, it doesn't see these as individual things. It just sees it as one inventory. So it only put one blaze rod in. So that doesn't work. Uh, round robin seems to get a bit confused and sometimes it'll put two blaze rods in one slot and leave that one empty. Um, so, you know, some I think the majority of the time uh, that method works, but it's unreliable um, and it's not particularly uh, refined, if you ask me. So I'm just going to show you uh, how I've automated this now. Um, so the first thing we need to do, actually, is to give this guy a name. Um, so if we just call this... Jesus Christ, we're running a bit too fast there. If we call this one um, Atomic Calculator, and then I'm going to call the other one... The other one that I've got on me is for the uh, lightning rod on the roof uh, because I need to automate that as well because I need to automate the production of uh, electric diamonds. So actually let's let's name that one as well. Let's call this one uh, Doc Brown shall we? Excellent good right so um, the first thing um, is we're going to get uh, the atomic calculator, we're going to put that there. So that should, uh, if we've got something we can test it with, yes, that works, good. Um, so the first thing we want to do is set up the recipe um, for fire diamonds. So let's uh, let's see how, we'll see what we've got in stock. Um, so let's go to a processing pattern and let's say uh, one fire diamond from uh, two blaze rods and uh, one flawless diamond so let's get one of these and let's get two of these perfect okay uh, so that's that one recipe and then the other thing that we want to do in the atomic calculator is um, end diamonds as well uh, so let's grab an end diamond from there it's lagging a little bit and let's get some obsidian some end stone and an electric diamond uh, so the electric diamond goes there, uh, the obsidian and the end stone. Good. So we've got our two recipes for this guy. Um, so and then I'll talk you through uh, what this crafting thing actually does after I give you a little bit of a demonstration. So let's kick this demonstration off um, with uh, some fire diamonds. So let's order 20 of those. Nice, and then let's order 20 of these as well. And this is more like a, a robustness check, really, to check that it's going to be able to sort through the inventories. Um, so it's already found the two blaze rods, two sets of blaze rods, and the flawless diamond, and it's starting to craft um, these fire diamonds. And then what should happen, it should start bringing, bringing in the other items once these ones have gone. So there we go, so it just dumped 20 of each in there. Um, evenly distributed without any kind of issue. So these are in there. So the only thing that I need to do now is to get maybe some conduit. Um, so let's type in uh, Enderio conduit and then, then we can run the stuff back in. But we need a couple of filters as well, probably. Uh, let's, we only need like two. Um, have I got any normal filters? No, I'll just use these advanced ones for the moment. Um, that should be okay. I only need one filter actually. Um, so I'm just going to run um, some conduits behind the back here. So this is going to be extract always active, but it's not going to take out anything other at the moment anyway than fire diamonds or end diamonds like that. Uh, so let's put one of those on there and let's put that one on there. Return those two to the chest. There we go. And then let's join that over to here. So that's going to be insert. So they should start leaving now. Excellent. Okay, so those two crafting recipes should now be complete. Excellent. Okay, so let me talk you through how this program works. It's a bit complicated. I'm not going to uh, dwell on it too much uh, because I plan to make a tutorial on this at some stage. So let me just talk you through how this program works. It's quite complicated. Well, it's not really complicated. It's just long. Um, 
when you're writing these programs, um, you've got to talk um, about relative sides. Um, so we're talking to this node over here. So this is node one. Introduce yourself, node one. Um, so when I'm talking about um, referencing different sides, what you've got to do is try and pretend that you're the node. Um, so if you're the node and you're looking this way, then you're facing west. Yeah. Um, so then when you talk about the program, what's this saying is um, from node one, look west and then check if there's blaze rods in there so that's the only thing that it's doing is it's coming to here it's saying are there blaze rods if it's saying no then what it's saying is uh, check if there's end stone in there so if there's blaze rods it goes this way if there's end stones then it goes this way okay so that's how it kind of uh, checks for the two different types of items if it wants to craft blaze rods then what it does is it says yes i have got blaze rods in there um, so then it outputs a message and this is more for me debugging stuff um, it says I'm crafting fire diamonds then what it does is it drags the blaze rods into its internal buffer drags the flawless diamonds into its internal buffer and then it says uh, from node 1 which is node 1 over here node 1 the upside from node 1 so pretend you're looking up yeah and then inject it into the south side inventory of the block above okay so it puts it into uh, to this slot over here as if you had a pipe connected to it but it's not it's, it's kind of just putting it in there using the program okay so it puts uh, one blaze rod in there then it puts one flawless diamond in the west slot then it puts another blaze rod in the east slot and then it starts to empty the exit port and it's looking for fire diamonds to take out of uh, the production slot then it checks its internal buffer um, and asks have I still got items in stock if it has then it loops uh, if it hasn't then it exits comes back to the start of the program and then because there's no uh, blaze rods left in stock it goes on to the end stone and then does pretty much the same thing uh, with the end stone um, so as I said it's a little bit complicated and it's not really that complicated it's more just a long recipe but it is reliable I've tested it quite extensively um, in a test world uh, and it seems to work pretty well. I don't think that there's any reason um, other than sort of the size of uh, the the uh, program here why you couldn't put other patterns in there. And I'm sure you can make this a lot more compact than what I've got it. I've just got uh, my loops laid out like this because it makes uh, more sense in my brain to have these things like this. Uh, it's it's easier to follow when you sort of run around in a, in a logical kind of flow you can have loops that jump all over the place but it makes it quite hard to design your program so that's that one that works really well and um, that's allowing us or it will allow us i should say to automate some of the more um, sort of complicated recipes um, to add a little bit more to this uh, what i want to do is i want to come upstairs to my lightning rod and i want to get um, doc brown and i want to put him on there and that should connect and it should come online if i test it yes now i want to Get quickly get another I don't know if this is going to input into this automatically I might need to have a chest here and uh, knowing calculator I probably will so let's grab um, let's grab a chest well let's grab a couple more conduit actually because we're going to need those let's grab a chest from here that one will do and I need to make a pattern for this actually I haven't got a pattern for this yet so let's put that chest there so the items will come in here they'll get sent into this chest then they can go um, from here into this this is going to be extract always active this is going to be insert and then this guy is going to extract from there and I just need to get rid of that so you go away. Um, so this is going to be insert, and then this is going to be extract. Always active, and I'm not sure if this is going to work. I haven't even tested this. This is the first time I've been mucking about with it. Uh, so let's have a quick uh, go at putting this recipe together. Um, so all it is is a fire diamond. Um, cancel these away creates an electric diamond in that in the mast there we go so that should hopefully work um, 
let's have a little look, shall we? Let's see if this works. I might have to do a little bit of tweaking when it comes to the Ender IO conduits. Let's put this in there. Um, and let's order some more uh, electric diamonds and see where stuff goes. Uh, once we know where it's going, then we can figure out what we need to do. So let's order another 10 uh, electric diamonds. And see what happens. Ah. Huh. They're going in. Um, so that might, must be the right side for that. So maybe they just need to come around here. Maybe I need to have this side set to extract always active. And then maybe that should be good. Let's get another conduit. Let's put him uh, there. So is that coming out now? No, it doesn't seem to be coming out. Ah. Now there's a, there's a pattern here, isn't there? Well, there's a pattern that in that calculator is a massive pain in my ass, um, and it has been um, ever since I just I, I I can't tell a lie. It's not been that bad to be honest. There's some elements of calculator that I really really like, and there's other elements of calculator that just drive me absolutely insane. And this bollocks is one of them. Uh, let's do extract always active and let's do insert there. Now are they going? They've gone. Good. Right now let's check that that actually works before I go downstairs. Uh, let's order another 10 electric diamonds and let's check that all works. So they're coming in. Good. And they're going out. Good. And the recipe is getting completed. Yes. Excellent. Good. Um, so we've got Jesus Christ how did I do that? I fell through the floor. Um, so we've got um, quite a bit of calculator automated because um, if you remember I showed you guys this one. Now this is different okay this is okay this one because this has only got two ports um, so the chances of items getting mixed up um, is is pretty low okay so that's that one's okay it's only really the blaze rod recipe that's a pain in the ass um, and possibly um, the end diamond recipe. Um, they're the only ones that get jumbled up which is why I made this. So let's talk about quantum entangled singularity automation, shall we? So um, the traditional method, and the method that I've seen a lot of uh, other YouTubers use, is to do with uh, level emitters. So what you do, you have a level emitter set up that says, uh, do I have uh, at least 10 singularities in stock? And if I don't, emit a redstone signal that triggers an export bus uh, that exports end dust and singularities um, into a dropper or whatever then it triggers TNT or some other kind of explosion method um, and then you get singularities back and it all works very well but it only works very well if you've got singularities in stock okay so if you've got enough of these guys in stock then it will work if you haven't then what will happen is it will say I haven't got enough quantum entangled singularities therefore start exporting it doesn't care whether you haven't got any of these in stock it will just chuck these everywhere so you get ender dust basically spewed out all over the place or uh, if you haven't got any ender dust in stock then you get singularities spilled out all over the place so one of two things is going to happen you're either going to waste loads of singularities which uh, take quite a long time to make so you don't really want to be chucking them about or if you've got this guy set to auto craft so if you're auto crafting ender dust like I am here um, it's basically going to burn through stacks and stacks of ender pearls before you realize and then turn it off um, the good thing I suppose is that it makes explosion but if you're using tiny TNT then the explosions are quite small um, and if you've got it set up in a different dimension then that's going to be even more of a problem. Um, so there's a bit of an issue with it and uh, like I say if you babysit it then uh, then it will work but I'm all about not having to babysit automation. I like it to actually work um, under most circumstances or all circumstances if I can help it. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've sorted out a little bit of a system here. So uh, I'll talk you through it. It looks a bit complicated but it's not too bad. Um, what we've got is three level emitters. So we're relying on three inputs. So this one is basically your level emitter for the amount of quantum entangled singularities that you want to keep in stock at all times. So I've got this set to 40 and I've got 40 in stock so it's switched off. Um, this one is checking the amount of uh, singularities that you've got in stock and I've got this just set to 1 um, and the same for the end of dust. So those are both set to 1. Um, so this uh, all goes in to this guy here which is basically an AND gate and an AND gate is used, uh, well it's used in, in computers but all it is is it's saying um, have I got three redstone inputs. Um, if I've got three redstone inputs then I'm going to emit a redstone signal. 
under any other condition I'm not going to emit anything so it checks if you've got singularities in stock it checks if you've got ender dust in stock and it checks if you've got a need for more singularities so if all of those things are true then it outputs a redstone signal coming out to here and that effectively triggers the two uh, export buses that I've got here now this little doodad here is a sequencer um, all this is doing is it's slowing the amount of items that are exported at once so if you send a constant redstone signal to these two export buses here so these two export buses I've got one that is for singularities and I've got one that is for dust okay if you have one export bus then you'll just export a stack of singularities followed by a stack of ender dust uh, so you get an imbalance in the amount of items that come through the system which again is not good uh, you don't really want that happening in particular if you've got um, I don't know 5 million end dust in stock then it will export the whole lot uh, before exporting the singularities I'm pretty sure that's how it works um, if it doesn't do that uh, then it does something like it does like three of one and then one of the other and then four of one and then six of the other it doesn't do it in any kind of balanced way so that's why I've got these two export buses here so they are uh, completely necessary um, this sequencer here is basically slowing it down so it's sending a four tick pulse and the four tick pulse is just long enough to export one of each item okay and then it rests for the remaining 60 ticks okay so it does it every you know it's every few seconds isn't it what's I think 20 ticks is one second so every every three seconds it will send a pulse as long as these three are lit up if these three go out what it's got is a loop down here that says uh, loop the cycle when the redstone signal is present so that means that it's going to keep on pulsing every three seconds unless the redstone signal goes away so if it runs out of stock it will stop pulsing so if one of these goes out it will stop if the need goes away it will stop if I run out of singularities it will stop if I run out of ender dust it will stop so that's basically going to send you know if, if I've got six singularities in stock it's going to send six singularities and six dust because this is going to count down um, so that prevents you from having an imbalance in the ingredients that you're going to be sending out okay so it goes into there uh, they've uh, put one set of each item into this chest here then these ender IO conduits extract one and I've got these set to downgrade the speed uh, because um, it kind of made sense I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary actually oh, that's probably a, probably a pointless thing having those on there because you're only going to have one in stock at a time so anyway they send those along to a precision dropper and to a, uh, a pressure plate that's down here so this pressure plate it's linked to a, a redstone uh, conduit that comes around here this is just acting as an inverter so if there's no signal it's on if there's any type of signal then it's off okay so that's just an inverter that's the same as having a block with a redstone torch on one side uh, and then cod drink go out to it it just looks a little bit tidier and it doesn't get washed away when I flood the place um, so that is going round here and it's going into uh, this guy here which is a split cable um, so I've now got three heaters on this okay so when I stand on this pressure plate and I look at my steam boiler the temperature goes up pretty damn rapid it heats up to 100 degree 100 degrees in 30 seconds okay so it's not a massive amount of time what that does mean is that the entangled singularities get exported for at least 30 seconds whilst that steam boiler heats up unless it's already got some sort of residual heat in it um, then I've got these uh, range collectors up here uh, this is blacklisting enderpearls enderpearl dust and singularities um, so it only pick up the entangled singularities uh, when it does pick up the entangled singularities they come into here into this crate uh, which has got a storage bus in it so it registers the quantity and so that is uh, I think that's pretty much about it so let's uh, see the system in action shall we let's uh, maybe give this guy some more uh, singularities here uh, and then let's say to this I want you to uh, set this system um, I want to keep at least a hundred in stock so you can see all three of those are lit up it's processing through there it's sending one set at a time every three seconds or so and you can see in the distance over there it's dropping them uh, but it's dropping one of each okay now this will start exploding in a couple of seconds as soon as that gets up to temperature there it goes it's exploding 
that's making the singularities. And this will carry on exporting until that level's reached now. Because all these all these three are still on. So it's set to a hundred. Um, I'm not quite sure how many I've got in here now. There's probably quite a few. Maybe we'll set this to a little bit lower. <laughs> uh, so let's set this to 70. So that switches off. That stops anything else from coming out. So you can see that it's completely used up all of the items in there. Um, now there's one other little bit of refinement. So what I noticed was that every now and then um, this will maybe sort of be on the edge of sending one but it will send two. Okay, So you might get two ender dust come through in one craft which results in uh, something undesired which is an ender dust sitting on that pressure plate um, and the thing continues exploding like forever. Um, so I've what I've done is uh, I've got another redstone signal that comes out of here so when this is switched on it sends a signal along here to this timer which is set to a delay of uh, 1200 ticks which is a minute so that's basically saying I'm going to send a redstone pulse after one minute one minute should be plenty of time um, to replace the singularities that we've used okay um, so this pulse is coming along here it's going to pulse this range collector here and it's going to pick up any singularities and enderpearl dust that's left behind. Um, so if we do end up with a stray dust there, after one minute, this guy will pick it up and it will put it back into the system, um, which is then on this import bus here to collect uh, any stragglers. So that's my system. It's <laughs> um, I kind of sat there for I sat here for quite a long time trying to get this to work, to be honest. Um, and probably the amount of time that I spent in it, I probably could have manually crafted quite a lot of singularities. That is very true. Um, so if you want, you know, if you want, you can set this up. If you don't, then uh, then I won't blame it. I just like my systems to be completely reliable and uh, utterly foolproof in every kind of situation possible. So that's what I've been up to anyway. Um, so why don't we have a look now? Um, let's have a look at this mob grinder, shall we? And let's see what additional items we need. I know that there's a nether star in there. Um, but I don't know what else is in there. So what about this guy? Um, block of demon metal. We need to automate that. Draconium ingots. I think um, in terms of draconium ingots, have we got these on auto? Yes, we do. Uh, but I think I need draconium dust as well. So I might need to teach you how to make draconium dust, but we've got those on auto um, with an energy core. So we need to do this demon metal doodad here. So demon ingots... It talks in the description about uh, throwing special metals into a lava well. So, and I think I've done a bit of reading, and that kind of makes sense because I think what we need is some gold, um, and we probably need a dropper as well, and then we probably need another range collector. Have we got any? We haven't got any in stock. Let's uh, make a range collector then. So we should have hoppers, I think. Yes, cool. Range collector, and what else will we are we going to need? Um, an ME interface uh, to automate it. So that guy there, um, I think that should be okay. Uh, we also need um, so we're going to need some nether bricks, uh, some of these, and we're going to need to make like a little pond for it, if you like. So let's let's just grab a few of those, and then uh, finally, I think we need. Uh, a lava bucket as well so let's grab a lava bucket from there so that should be us good to go let's just move some of these things down there so the idea of this is that it's going to drop the gold into the lava and then the lava turns into demon metal i believe i think that's how it works probably need some of this conduit as well and uh, we probably won't need our sword um, so i think i'll probably set this up downstairs somewhere so why don't we go down to the factory floor and set it up down here so a nice little spot uh, where we've got access to ME conduit have we got here what's this cable facade good okay so what we can do is maybe we can uh, do it like this I think it needs to have one at the bottom as well uh, so let's get rid of that for a sec there we go let's get rid of that one and then let's get rid of this one as well and let's put that one there so um, I think that if I fill this up with lava now and chuck some gold in there and I'm only going to chuck one because I'm not quite sure if it's going to work let's chuck some gold in there there we go look 
demon ingots perfect right now all we have to do is automate this in some manner so uh, what I'm going to have is uh, my range collector so where's my where's my facade it's, it's there so I really want my um, I want to think about this a little bit uh, so my precision dropper is going to be there you know what I'm not scared of lava Let's put you there. There we go. Let's quickly eat something before we die. There we go. And that should be okay because I think these have to be a little bit away from the lava, actually. Um, so then let's put the uh, collector uh, like right next to these. I want them to grab them before they burn. Um, and then let's have the ME interface like there. Then let's have uh, the covered cable. So where is, what's this? Where's the facade? The facade's like there. Um, so let's have that going to there like that. So that should be okay. So the items should come in here um, and they should get chucked into here. Then they should get picked up by this guy. And the whitelist is going to be demon ingots. And then they're going to get piped out of there. Um, have I got enough of these? I've got two. I think it's two. Yes. Uh, should get popped out of there, up here, and into there. So that should, I think, extract always active and then insert. Let's just check this guy's online because these have been a bit funny, these ones down there. Yeah, there's some online. Good. Um, so let's go and make a recipe uh, real quick over here. Um, and this is just going to be a simple crafting recipe that is going to say um, if I give you one gold, then you give me one demon ingot. Okay, and I think um, I've seen things where this is not a reliable craft, um, where sometimes you uh, you don't get a full stack of, uh, you know, you don't get a, if you put one gold ingot, you don't get a demon ingot every time. Um, but I've heard other people say that that's nonsense. Um, so <laughs> we'll see anyway. Let's check that this actually works. Right, let's see if we can craft some demon ingots now. Let's craft uh, 10 of those. So that's kicking that off. Uh, did it work? Yes, 10. Um, so that seems to be working okay. Um, maybe I want to craft another 30 to make sure that that's actually giving me the amount that I expect. So it's given me, yeah, it's given me a one-to-one -one thing. So I think, I think that's okay. What I'll do, I'll keep an eye on it, um, and then uh, if I need to, I can adjust it a little bit by putting maybe uh, a two-to-one ratio for the recipe in there. But I think that should be okay. I'm not convinced that it's not a one-to-one -one recipe by by the performance of that. It seems to be working perfectly fine. So that's another little bit of automation setup. That's really good. So the last thing that I want to check is that we have uh, the bits and pieces that we need for this mob grinder because that's going to be the objective for the next episode is to maybe build a wither farm I think. Um, so we need this guy. We've got all of the stuff that we need for that now. So we can make a block of demon metal. We can make ultimate control circuits. So let's go and teach our system how to do that shall we so let's say uh, learn how to do that and I haven't got some of the bits that I need what have I not got uh, octodic capacitors I thought I had those on auto craft yes I have so let's just grab one of those that'll take oh no it didn't take a few seconds to craft um, so the octodic goes there and then what was the final bit? So the block of demon metal. So I need to teach it how to do that, don't I? Um, so let's teach it how to do that one. In a normal crafting pattern. And um, we'll take that one from there. And then we just need to actually go back. We need to put one of those in stock. And then we need to teach it how to make these. So we've got wyvern cores automated now. Um, let's see about putting this in the right place. So this needs to just go in the uh, molecular assembler. We still got space. Yes, we have. Uh, I'm going to put it next to that guy there, and I'm going to put this one in there. Oh, and thank you to falling off the grid as well for pointing out that I um I've messed up the ratio on my uh, 
previous episode about automating uh, mechanism and stuff these produce eight atomic alloys because we're using compressed obsidian um so i just had one there so i was my crafting recipes were all messed up so cheers for that buddy um so that's the wyvern energy core done and then what about this wyvern core um so this is where we need the ludicrite ah oh, so ah oh, yes the ludicrite block is made this way isn't it it's made from plutonium um it's made from ender pearls and blocks of emerald so a couple of things that we need to do then actually next episode we can't make uh, this guy until uh, we get a big reactor set up so that is going to be the objective i think for the next episode to uh, get a big reactor set up um and i'll need to do some research about uh, the size of these things and the production of these things uh, because uh, we need to get plutonium from this we don't get plutonium directly uh, what we get is uh we get cyanite um and yeah that doesn't really tell me anything um we get cyanite from it and we get cyanite by putting uh your lorium ingots in there um but you get a certain amount based on how efficient the thing is so we want this thing to burn through your lorium pretty quickly because we've not really got an issue with rf uh, so we're not really going to use the uh, reactor to produce rf we're going to use it to produce cyanite um, so I want to build a fairly inefficient reactor to give me the most cyanide um, in, in the shortest amount of time. Um, so I need to do some research on that. If you've got any tips, um, I'm thinking maybe a 5x9 um, for this reactor setup. I'm not quite sure. I also need to look up what ingredients and stuff I need. And actually, if I've got the, uh, got the crafting recipes and the necessary bits and pieces to make one. Um, so that could be quite interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I apologise if it was listening more to me talk um, uh, rather than do stuff, um, but I hope those automation setups um, are actually useful to people um, and that they make your life maybe a little bit easier. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode, my friends. If you have, then please leave a like and a comment, and I will see you guys next time where we will be mucking about with big-ass reactors.